All right, so I am not a KJV onlyist. I believe that there is a perfect Bible. That's what I believe. Why do I believe there's a perfect Bible? Well, in Revelation, it warns us about adding or subtracting words from the Bible, right? Let's read it. So let's go to Revelation 22 and let's go to verse 18. Verse 18. Revelation 22, verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Okay? Of this book. It says book. Okay? A book. An actual book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So, if you add to the book, God's going to add to the plagues that are written in the book. That is scary. That is very scary. So, I do not want to add anything to this book that he's talking about because more plagues are going to be added to me. That's, I don't, I'm not interested in that. Now, 19, and if any man take shall take away from the words of this, of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. That is scary. That is scary. I do not want to add or subtract any words from the Bible. All right, so adding, we know that adding, adding and sub, subtracting, Adding, adding and subtracting is, is bad. It's, it's, it's a bad thing. You should not do it. Bad things are going to happen if you add and subtract. So I fear the Lord and I do not want to do this. Because adding and subtracting is not a good thing. But here's the thing. How do we know which book we are adding or subtracting from? How do we know? Well, we don't. We have to figure out which book is correct and then we can see well, who's adding and who's subtracting. So, if you have a modern translation, I would tell you, go grab modern translations. Grab all the modern translations that you want to get. And let's see which Bibles promote heresy and which Bibles do not promote heresy. So, first, I guess we'll go to, well, in Revelation 22, if you read Revelation 22, verse uh, 16, 22, 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root of, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So the bright and morning star, okay? Now, if you read a modern translation, go to Isaiah, go to Isaiah 14, 12, Isaiah 14, 12. And if you read that, most likely... Lucifer is not going to be in that in there. If Lucifer is not in there, then it took out the word Lucifer. And guess what? This is the only place in the whole Bible that has Lucifer in it. But it's only in the KJV. Only the KJV has the word Lucifer in it. When I could be wrong, there might be one or two versions that have it, but most modern translations do not have Lucifer in their Bible. So if you read Isaiah 14, verse 12, my, my version says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Now, does your Bible say morning star? If it does, it's saying that Lucifer and Jesus are the same person. They're saying that Jesus in Revelation is the morning star, but it also says Lucifer is the morning star. So your Bible is saying that Jesus and Lucifer are the same. So, but not all translations do this, but some of them do. So, Lucifer, or I'm, I'm just, I'm just put Satan. I'm just put Satan. Because we know that Lucifer becomes Satan because he rebels against God. So, Satan equals God is what your Bible version is saying. Well, not every Bible version, but some of them. So, that's heresy, right? My Bible version is saying that Lucifer and Jesus are different. So, is that good or bad? That's good, right? So, yeah. It seems like the KJV is still good right now because it's not promoting that Jesus is God. It's promoting that Jesus is God and Jesus is not Lucifer. Okay? But some of your Bibles might say that. And that's heresy to say that Satan is equal to God, right? Because Satan is not equal to God. He's not, he's not right? You agree with that, right? So do you really want to read a Bible that says that Lucifer and God are the same? So you need to throw those Bibles out. You need to throw them out. Now, let's go to, uh, 
Let's go to... Hmm, try to think here. Oh, yeah, let's go to uh, Mark 1. Mark 1. Mark 1. Is is God a liar? Does God lie? No, he doesn't, right? He's he, he, oh, he tells the truth and nothing but the truth, right? Well, does your Bible say that God lies? Well, let's see. Mark 1, verse 2. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. So it says prophets. It's talking about multiple prophets here. Okay? So let me read it again. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Okay? Now this is talking about Micah. Or, no. Malachi, I think. Malachi, most likely, no, no. I think it's Malachi. So Malachi is. I, I think I'm pronouncing the name wrong, but I think it's Malachi. I could be wrong, but it's it's Mal and then C A C H I. Okay. So if you go to three one. Uh, Ma- uh, Mal- Ma- Malak is not Malachi. It's not. You know, I'm just gonna say Malachi. So Malachi three one. Behold, I will send my messenger. Okay. So this is what this is the pro- This is literally the same thing as Mark two, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom he ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord God of hosts. Right? So my Bible is correct. That that prophecy in the Old Testament lines up with Mark, right? Now let's keep reading uh, in 3. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. That is Isaiah. That is an Isaiah. Well, how do I know that? Well, let me go to Matthew 3. Well, in my Bible, it gives me uh, Matthew 3. 3 is beside it. Matthew 3, 3. Then it get, takes me, then it says beside that verse, Isaiah 43. So every, every verse in this King James Bible tells me to go to a verse. It gives me a verse that's talking about it in a different place in the Bible. Very cool. So it jumped me from Mark to uh, Matthew, and then Matthew jumps me to Isaiah 40. Talking about a man crying in the wilderness. Let's go to Isaiah 40. Let's see if the KJB Bible is is, uh, telling the truth that this verse is talking about what it's talking about in Mark. So Isaiah 40, uh, verse 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Yep. Yep. But what about your Bible? Your Bible most likely says, as it is written in Isaiah, the prophets, or the prophet Isaiah. But no, it's Malachi and Isaiah, the, those two prophets, two my Bible says prophets too, but your Bible says the prophet Isaiah. One prophet. That's a lie. That's a lie from God. It's talking about multiple prophets, not one, two. So your Bible lied to you. So is your Bible of God or of Satan? Who's the father of lies? This guy right here. So why would, why would God lie in your Bible? God does not lie, right? They're not equal. No. Who lies? This guy, right? So, Satan he's the author of these modern translations. From the research I've done and the verses I've seen from other translations and my translation, there's a whole bunch of other verses I can bring up. There's places in the Bible where it says that Jesus is the servant of God in your version, but my version says that he's the son. There's verses that say that we're slaves to God, but my version says we're servants. That's in Ephesians 5. 
Your version says we're slaves to God, but my version says we're servants. So is your Bible from Satan or is it from God? That's, that's what you got to understand. And you could be like, well, no, 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 all Bibles are from God. They're not from Satan. Well, then why is there 200 modern translations and all of them attack the KJV, but the KJV attacks all of the modern translations, all of them? And we say that we believe there's a perfect Bible and we think that the perfect Bible is the KJV. So I don't believe that we should just believe that the KJV is the perfect word of God. I think that we should believe that there is a perfect word of God and read all the versions and see which one is the best version, which one does not promote heresy. Adding and subtracting. Which version is the best? So we know what's adding and what's subtracting. Let's go to uh, 1 John 5, uh, 7. 1 John 5, 7. Wait, that's not in your Bible? 1 John 5, 7, it's not in your Bible. Why, why is it not in your Bible? Did they subtract a verse from your Bible? Why do they take that out? Because they, it literally would say, it literally will, will just take it out. Verse 7, it will literally just say 6, and then it will go straight to 8. It will not say 7. It will just go straight to 8. Or there will be a bracket or something. So it just, it took out a verse. It literally does, it literally shows you. It literally shows you, hey, hey, look, we took a verse out of the Bible. It literally shows you that it did. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. And uh, you might say, well, you're just in a cult. You just think a KJV only is the way to go. And you just, you don't want to uh, upset the people in your cult that you're, you're in. Well, I will get more persecution for believing in KJV only than if I said, oh, well, all the translations are fine. I'll be more persecuted by saying KJV is the only word that you should be reading. What do I have to gain? What do I have to gain from this? Most Christians will say that Jesus did die on the cross and he did resurrect. Why? Because there's so much people that were willing to die because of their faith in Jesus Christ alone. Him being raised up is true. That actually happened, and they had nothing to gain from it. Nothing. The majority of people did not want to believe in Jesus. They did not want, believe, want to believe Jesus resurrected from the dead. So the majority of people in this world, they want to read whatever translation they want to read, right? The majority of the people in the world don't want to believe in Jesus, right? They're antichrist. They hate Jesus. So judging by what the Bible teaches us, and judging by the gospel, how most people don't want to hear the gospel. They don't want to hear that their sins are paid for. They don't want to hear that. They love their sin. And they don't want it to be gotten rid of on the cross, right? So we put our faith... I put my faith in the KJV Bible, not because it saves me. No. You can be saved reading another version. Why? Because God is so more powerful than we are. Even if Satan corrupts his word, his word is still going to be able to to save somebody. Even if it's corrupted a little bit, God can still use that to save people. That's how powerful God is. All right, well, I hope you guys at least think about, hey, maybe there is a perfect word of God, and maybe I should look more into this KJV onlyism thing. Maybe I should look more into doing some more research and seeing if the KJV is the perfect word of God or not. Maybe I should try to see if it is or not. And I would recommend watching my video called A Secret That Satan Is Hiding From Every Christian. Uh, it's, it's a question mark after that. And then it says Antioch and uh, Egypt or Egypt and Antioch. It'll be in, the, in a playlist called KJV on my channel. All right, well, let's go to a word in prayer. All right, dear God, thank you for uh, giving us your perfect word, Lord. Well, Lord. Uh, we... We as uh, Christians, we look for your perfect word. We look for your amazing word. We know there's a whole bunch of evidence that proves that the KJV is the perfect word of God. And we uh, we pray that uh, we won't be over uh, be confident that, oh, we, we read the perfect word of God and other people don't and uh, take it too far and think that we're better than other people because we read the KJV only. I want to make sure that you keep us humble, Lord. And even if people don't agree with us, we are able to just calmly tell people that, hey, like, there, there's this, there's that. 
this is this the evidence that I have, and let them come to their own decision. We don't want to force our opinions onto them. We want them to come to their own conclusions and believe on their own. Take the evidence that they have and uh, make a faith-based choice on if it's the perfect word or not. And Lord, I thank you for the, the resources that you've given us to uh, defend the faith, to defend everything that is is true. The truth will set us free, and I, and I just love, the truth is awesome. It's amazing. And Lord, we can argue about the versions, we can argue about this, that, and the other, but the most important thing that we all need to understand is that people, they don't have the gospel, they don't believe in it, and they could go to hell if they don't believe in it before they die. So I pray for every person that's listening to this video, I pray for every person that's struggling with their life will realize that there's per a person out there that if they die, they're going to hell. And that we, including me, will be convicted to tell people about you. So they can live forever in heaven. We go through trials and tribulations on this earth. But we know that there is no trial and no tribulation in heaven. Heaven will be perfect, holy, no sorrow, no pain, no suffering. Perfect holiness and harmony with God Almighty forever and ever. And even though we don't want to preach the gospel because it can bring danger to our life. We can be persecuted for it. We got to realize that death is not the end. Death is the beginning, really, because heaven is forever and ever. So, Lord, I pray for strength through your Holy Spirit and through your word and through prayer to help us lead people to life through the Son that the God has sent for all of us to receive the holy gift of the Holy Spirit by the remission of sins through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. And in God's name we pray, in Jesus' name, amen.